Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali with the off-season hurricane outlook and discussion for April 30th, 2020, recorded around 3.13 p.m. Eastern Time. The main, development of the, the main development region of the Atlantic is continuing to warm and certainly starting to show signs of what could be a pretty active Atlantic hurricane season this year. It is setting up in store with the waning and fading El Nino-like environment out here in the Nino 3.4 region. That is continuing to fade and show in and fill in with more of these bluer anomalies suggesting cooler than normal waters at the surface. And these will continue to persist and also strengthen uh, in the size and intensity really over the next coming weeks and months. And out here across the Atlantic, we will be continuing to watch again a favorable setup for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Currently so far with the uh, temperatures running about a half a degree to a degree above, uh, Celsius above the long-term average out here in the main development region. We've really waned a lot of those cooler anomalies just from even a couple of days ago. We're starting to wane those cooler anomalies and uh, really setting stage for what could be, again, another pretty active hurricane season about four years in a row now, I do believe. Taking a look at the upper ocean heat content, this is the actual depth of the uh, heat in the ocean. The higher numbers, basically the higher on the scale you go is the more depth of the warmer waters and the less on the scale that you go towards these blues, the less of the depth in the ocean those warmer waters extend down to for these simplistic terms. And we do really note that we do have a couple of areas of interest uh, showing up already, of course, in the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico, we do have some where these warmer than average anomalies are. We're starting to see the development of about a hundred, about uh, about a hundred in, in the depth. So we're approaching the the pretty the middle to the uh, upper end of that kind of distribution there. Again, this could favor any early season activity to get going pretty quickly in across that area. Uh, you know, of course, if the shear in the environment is right with those sea surface temperatures the way they are now. We are certainly starting to see what could be the signs of a pretty active hurricane season. We're also watching out here, uh, out past the Lesser Antilles, across the main development region. Not showing anything right now, but just look to, to the south of those, those areas right now. And you see all the upper ocean heat content is locked in the intertropical convergence zone. And as the hurricane season approaches, the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ zone, will continue to lift off towards the north and this will provide the upper ocean heat content to rapidly expand across the main development region. And uh, this will pretty much play into, again, what I think could be a pretty busy uh, hurricane season upcoming and a lot, what a lot of other experts in this field uh, suggest the same as well. Taking a look at the actual sea surface temperatures here, uh, this is coming off of weathermodels.com, and this is the sea, actual sea surface temperatures uh, for the portions of the Caribbean, southwestern Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico. And everywhere here, basically the 26 degrees Celsius line, which is highlighted here, uh, suggests a favorability for hurricane or for tropical systems and hurricanes. This is the minimum threshold that you need uh, sea surface temperature-wise for tropical systems to develop. And that has pretty much filled up the entire, well, has filled up the entire Caribbean, portions of the Bahamas, and we're also looking at portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, you still can get uh, tropical systems to develop in about 25 to 24 degrees Celsius, but that's all the different thermodynamic environments, and of course, just I, I, the atmospheric situations that kind of feed into that. And uh, that's a little bit too much to talk about in this video, but basically for the gist of things, there is the favorability for tropical systems for early season development, of course, across this region, typically where we would focus towards early season development anyway, so no big shock there. Taking a look at the 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies, this is coming off the GFS forecast. This was produced on 27th of April of this year and goes to about May 2nd. So here in about a couple of days, the red anomalies here suggest the westerly winds and the bluish, bluish and purple anomalies suggest a easterly wind. And we do notice that we've been in a pretty good easterly wind here across the last couple of weeks, suggesting that the sea surface temperatures are going to be rapidly falling across the Nino 3.4 region, which is this region right here. 
you notice from even three days ago, we're really starting to wane a lot of these warmer anomalies right here being replaced with some of the cooler anomalies down here at the surface. And of course, at depth, there's a large pool of cooler than normal anomalies that will surge upwards again with the easterly winds that are coming across this area. And that will continue to favor the development of these cooler than normal uh, ocean anomalies and suggest again a pretty favorable pattern for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season when there's certainly no Nino that is a big plus sign for the Atlantic main development region in the Atlantic as a whole. Taking a look at the shear values coming off the CFS version 2 this was produced on April, uh, April 12th and runs all the way through June, July, and August, or July, August, September of 2020. And uh, the bluish anomalies are the lower than normal and the red are above normal wind shear numbers. And again, for most of the main, main development region, we are in that neutral to um, just slightly below normal uh, wind shear anomalies. And a big note here is in the Caribbean where we do have, and, and the Gulf of Mexico, lower than normal wind shear no anomalies. This is big for a couple of reasons. The Caribbean has not seen a major tropical system since Hurricane Matthew in 2016. And for the last couple of years, the, the Caribbean has basically been a graveyard for any storms running into that region due to the drier air and the higher shear anomalies. This year, that's looking to be a tad bit different with the lower shear anomalies, assuming this pans out correctly. And if it does so, watch out because there could be some storms uh, that uh, do actually make it make their way into the Caribbean and that could be also another potentially dangerous situation with those temperatures and with it only getting warmer throughout the season again that is just a recipe right there uh, for some disastrous effects potentially again that's not anything to be confir confirmed or alarmed with but again the potential is certainly there for what could be a pretty active Atlantic hurricane season. Speaking of the weather, though, we are watching a couple of areas of severe weather today across the lower 48. Marginal risk for severe storms across the South Florida area, including Miami, Florida, but those storms are now gradually working their way off the Florida Peninsula and out here into the Bahamas. We're also watching just north of Wilmington, North Carolina, and also Cape Hatteras regions for the potential for some damaging winds. There and across the northwestern United States, also watching for the potential for a few damaging wind threats as well. Day two convective, we pretty much clear out Florida. Only a couple isolated showers and maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two across the Northeast. Also watching across portions of the Midwestern states once again as we round up for another potential severe weather threat heading into the latter part of this week and weekend. We are watching that marginal risk on day three shift its way in through portions of Kansas and again gearing up for what could be another severe weather event across the plains in the uh, traditional quote unquote tornado alley there within the next couple of weeks or so. Taking a look at the radar, this is from Melbourne, Florida. We are continuing to monitor those showers and thunderstorms gradually shifting off the coast here with just a couple uh, trailing bands of showers and storms in the Key West regions. But for the most part, that front has gradually passed out, and you can definitely tell our winds have shifted out here towards the easterly, the easterly direction here. And we're kind of watching just some remnant showers that are just east of Orange County, just east of Kissimmee, approaching Rockledge here. Maybe as far east as Melbourne here that they might get to. But again, these are very isolated and certainly not strong to severe at all. And there is Grand Bahama, which obviously got hit and rocked by Hurricane Dorian last year. Of course, Dorian kind of came through here and up the coast, it went like that. So we'll be continuing to monitor the upcoming 2020 Atlantic hurricane season throughout the remainder of the time. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I will see you again on Monday.